Everybody knows that the richest man in the world is Sheik Ali Bey Window, Sultan of the oil-rich kingdom of Lata Mula. The Sheik is renowned for two things, his enormous harem and his fabulous jewel collection. It's hard to tell which he admires more. Old Arab proverb says, a woman doesn't remain beautiful forever like a diamond, but can a diamond scratch your back where you can't reach? Down a little lower. As you might suppose, the Sultan's palace is guarded like Fort Knox. Nevertheless, one dark night... Height! Who is there? It's only I, Effendi, the Icy Pop Man. You want Icy Pop? What flavors you got? Desert dessert, sand dune sherbet, shishka berry, and camel crunch. One shishka berry, one camel crunch. Coming up, Effendi. But those ice cream bars weren't as innocent as they looked. The knockout drops work, plum tree. Come on out. They'll sleep for hours. Let's go. And a short time later, at a guard post on the border. Hey, the bountiful beard of Ali Ben Blue. Look. A great magic bird. Do we shoot it down? You flipped your face. Magic bird season doesn't open till September. Oh. And the fleeing helicopter disappeared from view unscathed. Now you may well ask, what does all this have to do with George of the Jungle? All right. What all this got to do with George of Jungle? This, George, dear, here's a telegram from the district commissioner. Request your help. Locate and return 300-pound pearl. Thought to be hidden in Bui Bui Rubber Plantation. Your area. Signed, district commissioner. Very odd. District Commissioner talked just like George. A 300-pound pearl. That must be an amazing sight. So must the oyster it came from. District Commissioner need help. George, go. Oh, I just knew you would. Me too. And so the gallant forest monarch, accompanied by his faithful ape, set forth to recover the 300-pound pearl, ever willing to support law and order. Support your local district commissioner. Oh! A few days later, found them within sight of the Mbwibwi plantation, and vice versa. Cooey, Titheridge. It be George of the Jungle. Already? <laughs> it's a fast-moving plot, Plumtree. What do we do now? I have a plan to discourage him. Aye, and what be it? Look, I fly above George with a helicopter and drop a safe on him. Meanwhile, you shoot him five times with an elephant gun. Hmm. That be pretty discouraging, all right. Tetheridge to Plumtree. Tetheridge to Plumtree. Ah, go ahead. I'm almost in position. Are you ready? Already here, over and outy. Then here goes. Hush. George here, twig snap, twig. Sounded to me like a safe falling on somebody, a gunshot and a plane crash. Uh-uh, very loud twig, come. And the jungle lord continued on his way unopposed except by an occasional tree. Oh! Once inside the deserted villa, George and Ape came across an enormous box. Here it is, George. Hmm. The label's in simple Aramaic. It says 300 pound pearl inside. Use no hooks. We take it before bad men return. It be a bit late for that, laddie buck. George, it's the two arch criminals, Titheridge and Plumtree. They have us covered. George, not no meaning of fear. <laughs> of course, George could learn. It looked like the end of the jungle trail for our friends. No worry, ape. George, now give jungle distress call. All George's jungle buddies rush to rescue. Elephants, water buffaloes, aardvarks, all. What is the distress call, George? It go, help! Sure enough, instantly there was the rush and patter of thousands of tiny feet, and the room was suddenly filled with termites. George, you called the termites. Are you sure that was the right call? Right call? George must have got wrong area code. Within moments, the greedy little nippers had gnawed the villa to the ground. Enough of this nonsense. Ready? Aim. But unseen by the villains, the huge box, weakened by the termite attack, began to split and crumble. And suddenly... Aha! Arf! 
Shut me up in a box, will you? Hold me for ransom, will you? Is that any way to treat a lady? A refined, gentle, defenseless woman? Good heavens! Who, you? Me? I'm Pearl. 300 pound Pearl. The Sultan's favorite. Well, it all turned out all right after all. The Sultan got back his 300 pound Pearl. Oh, sweetie! And George got a handsome reward. Ruby, emeralds! You give all these for one Pearl? She is my Pearl of great price. This lady is best back scratcher in all Lata Mula. Oh. oh, here it is. Distress call really go. See? When you find yourself in danger, when you're threatened by a stranger, when it looks like you will take a licking. <laughs> There is someone waiting who will hurry up and rescue you. Just call for Super Chicken. Fred, if you're afraid, you'll have to overlook it. Besides, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. He will drink his super sauce and throw the bad guys for a loss. And he will bring them in alive and kicking. There is one thing you should learn when there is no one else to turn to. Call for Super Chicken. Call for Super Chicken. This is the mountain hideout of the Zipper. Fastest criminal known to man. There he is now. Let's follow him. Whoops, we lost him. Oh, there he is in his laboratory. And this is my latest evil creation. A bomb powerful enough to blow up the world. Observe. That's it? Don't be silly. That's just a model. This is the real thing. One pull of this switch and boom! Goodbye, Charlie. The world. Little does the zipper know that the whole scene is appearing on nationwide television. Can't a master criminal have any privacy anymore? The news spread like peanut butter. The zipper is loose! The zipper is loose! He's going to blow up the world! There is nothing more dangerous than a loose zipper. Panic filled the streets. Our scene now shifts to the Pittsburgh penthouse of Henry Cabot Henhouse III, better known as Super Chicken. Did you hear the news, Fred? Yes, somebody lost a zipper. That's zipper, and he's loose. This looks like a job for Super Chicken. Hot digging. You get the super sauce, and I'll change into my super suit. Roger Wilcox. Ready? Ah! I guess not. Now, Fred, the super sauce. Do you want to be super for half hour or an hour? An hour. Right. Mmm, <laughs> not bad. That'll give me a 15-minute dividend. <laughs> And within seconds, the way below average, mild mannered Henry Cabot Henhouse III was transformed into a way above average. Super Chicken! The fearless fowl took to the air to find the zipper. Look up in the sky! It's a seagull! It's a turkey! It's me and Super Chicken! Quiet, Fred. I was hoping the zipper would think we were a turkey. So Super Turkey is out to stop me, is he? I'll put a stop to that. I'll get him first. The deadly game began. Super Chicken hunting the zipper. And the zipper hunting Super Chicken. But though they searched for three hours, they couldn't find each other. Curses! I'll have to set a trap for the dumb club. Making a straw-filled dummy that looked only vaguely like himself, the zipper put a bomb inside it and set it up on the corner of 4th and Main. Hmm. It's a dummy of the zipper. Hey, what do you know? A dummy of the zipper. Look, Mommy. A dummy of the zipper. Aha! It's the zipper! <laughs> Easy, Super Chicken. You're knocking the straw out of him. All criminals go to pieces when you finally run them down, Fred. But he's not run down. He's still ticking. Hmm. So he is. You know something, Fred? That wasn't the real zipper. It was a booby trap. Yeah, and it trapped the... Uh, <laughs> Who can play at that game? Well, you two play then. Super Chicken quickly made a dummy of himself, in which he placed a bomb. What's more, I'll stay right here to make sure nothing goes wrong. But the zipper was late, and at exactly 4.15... That clever devil. Now, how does one track an elusive zipper? By his zip code? <laughs> 
That's it. But I was just making a funny super chicken. Meanwhile, the zipper was seconds away from blowing up the world. <laughs> but suddenly above his hideout... There's the zipper zip code. 91042. Hang on, Fred. We'll ram the door. But I was just making a funny. Hmm. Maybe we should knock first. Entering, Super Chicken and Fred found themselves in a large stone dungeon. Look, there's the zipper's laboratory. Two inches of water covered the floor. He thinks the water will short-circuit my super electric bolt charge. But I'm wearing my rubber webbed chicken boots. Watch this. <laughs> Sorry about that, Fred. The next lightning bolt missed both Fred and the door, blowing a hole in the wall. That was a mistake. For through that hole came six 100-pound gorillas bounding into the room. Hold it. Not six 100-pound gorillas. That's one 600-pound gorilla. Oh, sorry about that, Zipper. Stand back, Fred. I'll subdue him with my super body. Maybe you better use your super brain instead. Okay, Fred. Find a violin and play it. The mighty bird had lucked out again. Fascinated by the music, the huge beast dropped everything. Keep playing, Fred. This is my chance to get the zipper. Time's up. Super Chicken has failed. Goodbye, world. No, you don't, zipper. The fearless chicken launched himself headfirst at the zipper, who zipped away just in time. You missed. Super Chicken never misses. If everybody used his head as much as I do, there'd be a lot less sick leave. The job completed. Super Chicken and Fred headed for home. Well, we've seen the end of the zipper, Fred. Yeah. So stop that awful racket. Okay. Play, Fred. Play. So when you hear that cry in the sky with violin obligato, you'll know it's Super Chicken. Tom Slick, Tom Slick, let me tell you why, he's the best of all good guys. Tom Slick, Tom Slick, in the Thunderbolt, we slap her once he's on your tail. Every year, millionaire Tiny Big sponsors an auto race called the Big Race. First prize is $50,000. Gertie Growler needs $50,000 to pay the mortgage on her garage. Tom Slick has entered the Thunderbolt Three Slapper in the Big Race to try and win the $50,000 for Gertie Growler. Hope you win the Big Race for old Gertie, Tom boy. I hope so too, Gertie, but I'll have to beat that evil guy and bad sport Baron Automatic to do it. Be careful, Tom. Careful? There's no such word as careful in auto racing, Marigold. Here are some of the cars Tom Slick will have to beat to win the big race and the $50,000 for Gertie Growler. The Dragonster, driven by Fu An Yu. The four-pot blowpipe driven by Ivan Toratyrov. The one-wheel curb hugger under the firm command of Sir Philip Prince, sports-loving monarch from across the pond. Uh oh, here's the sinister blacktop ramshocker and the bad sport and all around rotten contestant, Baron Automatic. Gotcha, we must win this race at all costs. Speaking of costs, oh mighty Baron, just a matter of my back salary. How can you speak of money at a time like this, Gotcha? It's easy. I just open my mouth and by forcing air past my vocal cords, the sound comes out like this. Infatal dog, do you have the plans to stop Tom Slick and the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper? Right here. All right, stand by and await instructions. Cheapskate. The race has begun and the... Tom is in the lead. 
Come on, Tom. Old Gertie's garage is counting on you, boy. Baron Otto Magic is next to last, just ahead of Sir Philip Prince and the one wheel curve harder. It's a wonderful day for a race. You can see all the cars from last place. Curses come slick is in the lead. We will see about that. Baron to clutch up. Yes, master. Uh, about that back salary. All right. Now pay attention, you miserable lackey. Put plan one into action. That should let some air out of Tom Slick's chances. <laughs> oh, Tom has a flat tire. And old Gertie doesn't have a garage. Look, Gertie. Thanks for the hand, Sir Philip, but you have your own race to run. Never had a chance on my own, old boy. Drive on to victory. Blessed Royal Ninny has punctured a perfectly dirty scheme. Clutch up, plane two. Tom is back in the lead, thanks to the tireless efforts of Sir Philip Prince. Look, a helicopter flying right over the Sunday Bowl breach slapper. This plan's a gasser. I say, old boy, looks like someone's trying to borrow your petrol supply. I am beginning to think there is a cheater amongst us. Here, take these. I keep them handy in case I need to take a shortcut. That is the last draw. Latcha, then three. And this one better work. Speaking of work, how about that back salary? You sure got long arms, master. I knew you would get to the top in auto racing, Tom Slick. <laughs> oh, Tom is climbing onto the bridge. Be careful, Tom. There's no such word as careful in auto racing, Marigold. I know, but this is bridge climbing. Oh. <laughs> At last, the plan worked. Now my master, Baron Automatic, will win. Let me give you a hand, the Clutcher. No, Master. You're not the wrench again. Coward. Now, if I can just unstick this magnet. All the big magnets travel by air. <laughs> Tom, hold it off. He's back in his car and going flat out to catch Baron Automatic. Come on, Tom. Pour on the coal. Run up them RPMs. Light up that afterburner, boy. Grab all them goodies. <laughs> Easy, Gertie. I am sure he will try his best. There's no such thing as trying your best in auto racing, hon. It's winner take all. It's the last lap. The Baron Automatic is in the lead, followed by the four-pot blowpipe, the Dragon Stir, and coming up fast on the outside is the famous Thunderbolt Grease Slapper. Here they come for the finish. Baron Automatic still in the lead, but here comes Tom Slick. It's the Baron. It's the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper. It's the nose and the nose. It's a photo finish. I hope it develops that Tom won. The winner is Tom Slick and the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper by a nose. There you go, Gertie. Now you can pay off the mortgage on the garage. Tom Slick, you're too much cat man. I mean like you are the most involved lead foot entered in the big race to glory, boy. Thank you, Gertie, for whatever you said. I wonder what happened to that rat, Baron Automatic, and his evil little assistant. I have one more plan, Clutcher. To pay me my back salary? No, to pay you for ruining all my beautiful plans to win the big race. I am going to beat you to within an inch of your miserable life. Splend fabulous. Splendor fabulous? There is no such word as splendor fabulous in auto racing, Marigold. I know. I just like the sound of it. Oh. 